Beloved of God, we have turned the page um, on another month and entered into uh, the month of October. And as is usual, we have a new journey theme this month, uh, Reclaim. And Reclaim means to either take back, recover, or take possession of something that belonged to you that you have either lost or someone has taken from you um, or that you've misplaced. But in today's passage, Jesus was not reclaiming his authority, you will see. He was and is the religious and righteous authority, not only of that day, but also today and always. Will you pray with me? Gracious, loving, and all-powerful God, as we come this day to worship and praise you, we pray that you will open our ears, our hearts, and our minds that we might receive your word and be transformed anew. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 23 through 32. Listen and receive God's word for us. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. And they said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? Now they argued one, with one another and they said, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, when, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human or origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Then Jesus queried, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And that son answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Now, which of the two did the will of his father? The priest and the elders said, the first. To which Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, in order for us to understand today's passage, we must start with a few earlier verses. The priests and the elders who approached Jesus questioning his authority were not just concerned about what he was currently doing, teaching in the temple. Their interest or concern stemmed from his entry into Jerusalem two days before, when he came riding into the city on a donkey, greeted by people shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord and also proclaiming this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The chief priests and the scribes um, concern and more likely their consternation were elevated even more on the first day of his arrival when Jesus went into the temple, the center of Jewish religious life and turned over tables, upsetting the established order, the money changers, the exploitation, the money changers exploitation of the poor and marginalized people. They were concerned with his bold declaration that my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you people of power, privilege, and other priorities have turned it into a den of thieves. The elders, scribes, and the people of authority became angry as they witnessed Jesus healing the lame in the temple and heard children crying out still, Hosanna, son of David. The authorities questioned, who is this man who has come into the city, entered the temple, and now has all but usurped our power, privilege, and appears to be changing our priorities? 
Have you ever been in a situation where a new person comes into the workplace, your social group, and yes, even the church upsetting the order of the day? And God forbid if that person happens to be someone who does not look like, have the same or similar experiences or educational or achievement or the statue and authority of others. You, know, you all know what I'm talking about. Heaven help us if a woman, an immigrant, or a person of color has the audacity to come in and upset the structures in place by voicing their opinions, offering their suggestions, having experiences that exceed those of others with whom they work. Those persons might as well be turning over tables in the meeting rooms. Now, before we church people get too high up on our religious horses, we too are sometimes reticent to invite new members to speak their minds, voice their opinions, exercise their gifts, take on leadership roles. All sorts of confusion can break through when the liturgy or worship service is changed, an unfamiliar song is sung, sung or a liberal or conservative preacher is invited into our midst, much, like a much less a decision is made to change the carpet color or the walls of a room. Those of us who have been here invested our time, talents, and treasures sometimes take exception, but I digress. Jesus leaves the temple and travels to Bethany where he spends the night. The next day he curses a fig tree on the road as it has not produced any fruit and therefore is not useful. Jesus travels on returning to the temple where religious authorities find him teaching. They question by what authority is he doing these things? Not just teaching in the sacred place, but by what authority does Jesus upset the order of the day, turning over tables, driving out the unscrupulous vendors, healing the lame, cursing fruitless trees, and now teaching as one with authority. When you are in a position of privilege, power, and can set or establish the priorities, you typically do not take kindly to others coming in and making waves. One commentator states, the chief priest's question is reasonable. Their own authority in Israel has been given to them by God in the time of Moses and passed down for generations. For Jesus to say he was doing all these things by God's authority would be easily refuted on biblical and traditional terms. Perhaps more to the point, the real answer would be my own authority as Jesus embodies authority without any external help. However, for Jesus to claim divine status openly would be entirely unacceptable to most of his audience. So like a good rabbi or teacher, Jesus answers a question with a question, end of quote. Jesus turns the proverbial tables on the authority saying, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? Now the most controversial issue with Jesus's question is his close identification or is the close identification it creates between him and John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a marginal prophetic character who lived in the wilderness, wore animal skin for clothing, ate locusts and honey and met an untimely death for challenging Herod, one of Israel's actual authorities. Jesus's question denoted that like John, his authority is marginal as well. And we know that to be the case as Jesus did not seek traditional power, yet he was also not content, not content with staying out in the wilderness. Jesus came right up in the holy city and the temple, challenging those in authority to turn away from forms of God, godliness and evil and to turn to God. Forms of authority, godliness, righteousness, fruitfulness, and justice are empty gestures. They are clanging brass and noise-making symbols. When we exhibit reasonable facsimiles rather than true godliness, true righteousness, true fruitfulness, true justice and authority, then we are much like the fig tree, fruitless and good for nothing. The priests and elders realized that they could not answer Jesus's question. They could not say that John came from heaven as they did not receive or believe John to be sent from God. Likewise, they could not say he came from human origin as they feared the people who believed that John was a prophet from God. 
Commentator Lewis R. Donaldson states, the rejection of John the Baptist foreshadows and even necessitates their rejection of Jesus. Readers of the gospel know that John the Baptist witnesses to the messianic status of Jesus, end of quote. In essence, by asking the temple authorities to identify John's origin, Jesus was answering the question of, the, or, of his origin of authority. The scribes and elders chose the easy and coward's way out responding, we do not know. To which Jesus responds, then neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. Jesus then offers the parable of the two sons, one who initially refuses his father's request to go work in the vineyard, but later changes his mind and does what his father requested, and the son who initially responds affirmatively, but then does not go work in the vineyard. Jesus asks, which of these two sons did the will of his father? The authorities responded that the first son did the will of the father, despite first refusing to go. Later changing his mind, he repented of his disobedience and did as the father had requested. Jesus then proclaims that tax collectors and prostitutes, the people considered the lowest on the social ladder, would enter the kingdom of heaven before they would, before they would even though they were considered closest to God. Why? Because the tax collectors and prostitutes repented. They turned from their ways and believed the righteous message of John the Baptist. And they, those with power, privilege, and other priorities did not. Today's passage begins with religious leaders authoritatively questioning Jesus and concludes with the pronouncement that they will follow those they consider unrighteous, less than, and sinners into heaven. Can you imagine how angry and stunned the religious authorities must have been? I imagine they were thinking, how did the tables get turned on us? And how did we get ourselves into this predicament? Jesus is not interested in our presupposed or self-ordained power, privilege, or priorities. Jesus is concerned with the conditions of our hearts, the work of our hands, the fruit we produce, and that which we profess. In the economy of God, tax collectors and prostitutes lead the heavenly parade. In the economy of God, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. In the economy of God, women and children and LGBTQ people and people of color, as well as people of European descent, the marginalized, the ostracized and the disenfranchised are all valued, have worth and are the children of God. The journey theme this month is reclaim. As the people of God, we come this morning to reclaim our God-given and ordained right as the people of God, committed to righting the wrongs of society by ensuring that we are working to dismantle structural racism and to eradicate systemic poverty, to work for equal and just for a, an equal and just justice system to ensure that no one is disenfranchised and that everyone who is eligible to vote in the upcoming presidential elections does so and to hold those in power accountable to care for and protect all the people of this country, not just a chosen few by making affordable health care and housing, livable wage, employment and equal education available to all people period and point blank. We come this morning to turn the tables on the power, privilege, and priorities of the few, declaring that in Christ Jesus, God interrupts and disrupts the ways in which righteousness and privilege and power are often intermingled and confused, to declare that just as Jesus often confounds and confuses us with his unconventional ways, he also claims us all of us, even those considered the least of these by others. Beloved of God, as we are about to come to table, we must examine ourselves. And if we find that our power, privilege, and priorities are imp impede or diminish those of others or do not line up with those of God, then we are called to repent to turn away from our self-centered, self-serving, and selfish ways and turn to the God who loves us, turn to the God who claims us, 
and graciously delineates that all power, privilege, and priorities other than those established by Jesus Christ are useless, powerless, and insignificant. That is our call today. That is our call and our charge each and every day. If, and in fact, we are the people of God. Amen.